With over 600,000 followers on X, Kakage is well known for being the illustrator of Hololive's Takane Lui, doing art for light novels such as Danmachi Astraea Record, and games such as Fire Emblem Heroes. And for the past three years, I've had the incredible opportunity to have him as a mentor. I'm able to draw professionally now, but his mindset and approach to art had been very influential on my own, and he's helped shape the artist I am today. In this video, I'll be sharing with you some of the lessons I learned and how I've personally applied them to my own art in order to improve. Specifically, I'll be going through three common mistakes beginners make that Kakage Sensei often points out, which I also made at the start, and the three best pieces of advice I ever received from him. By the way, if you're new here, I'm Ori. And before we get into things, let me quickly give you the background behind this whole mentorship thing. Domo Tensaku Kai no Yami Kakage de Konnichiwa. In addition to being a popular illustrator, he's also infamous within the Japanese art community for dishing out the most brutal art advice and feedback you'll ever get. He does this as a paid service through his YouTube membership and fan box. So essentially, you can pay him to roast your art. He's very much a if you've got time to worry or complain, you should be drawing kind of guy and absolutely doesn't coddle you or pull back on the punches either. He'll give you feedback and straight up tell you where you suck and how to fix things, but you've got to do the work to improve. And sometimes he'll just point something out and leave it up to you to figure out the solution, which I think is great for learning because it forces you to not be dependent and use your own brain. So his way of teaching is definitely not for everyone, but I personally like it because it's honest, useful, and coming from a place of experience. As for our history together, back in the day, he used to do these morning croquis streams called Ohakuro, and I used to help out with translating them into English. Come on, Come on, come on, come on. Some people in the comments still recognize me from back then, which I thought is pretty cool. And I also had the opportunity to do a guest illustration for one of his books. By the way, if you're wondering if his VTuber model is a trap, can you translate what is anyway is she a trap? <laughs> she a trap? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Her name is Kageko, and the story behind it is that she can't speak, so instead she has these neck speakers, and Kakage Sensei speaks through it for her. I am a beautiful girl. I am a beautiful girl. Happy New Year! Okay, let's start with the beginner mistakes that Kakage Sensei often points out, which I also made at the start. You can apply these tips right away to improve your art, and I think just about everyone will find them useful. Keep in mind though, what Kakage Sensei teaches is focused on how to create illustrations that do well on Twitter, which is now called X, since that's the main social media Japan uses. And it's generally where you want to be if you want to do work in that space. But even if you don't use X, or just draw as a hobby and don't care about getting likes and all that, I think you'll still find the advice helpful since in the end, it's all based on how to create an illustration that looks good. So the first mistake is not making the eyes look at the viewer. This is probably one of the most common and also easiest mistake to fix. And even though this piece wasn't that bad, given I was still a beginner back then, it could have been easily improved by just making her eyes look at the camera. So before, after, before, after. There's something about how it just engages us more when the character is looking at us versus them just staring off into the void like this. Similarly, even if you want the character to look at something else, it's still important to check where they are looking since it's really easy to mess things up. I remember clearly learning just how much of a difference this makes back in 2021 when I drew this fan art of Hololive's Okayu. At the time, I was very happy with how it turned out and I was confident it would do well. But when I posted it, it did way below what I expected. So I showed Kakage Sensei the piece and he was immediately like, And I was like, whoops. At the time, I also hadn't studied the 3D structure of the eyes before, so I didn't realize that since the eyeball is essentially rotating down, then the top part of the iris should be more visible like this. And that's how you visually show the eyes are looking downwards. So imagine that this is the eye, and we have the top eyelid here, the bottom eyelid here, the center dot is of course the pupil, 
And this round part is the iris. So top eyelid, bottom eyelid, pupil, and then iris. The eyeball is a sphere, so in order to look down, it will rotate downwards. And when it does that, more of the top of the iris will be visible, and more of the bottom part will be covered by the bottom eyelid. And so overall, the eyes should have looked more like this. So before, after, before, after. And by fixing this and re-uploading it, the piece went on to do much better. If I remember correctly, I think it went from about 2,000 to 10,000 likes. This is probably an extreme example, but it definitely was a memorable lesson for me to always double check where the character is looking. So I think we've all seen fan art or had the problem ourselves when drawing it, where it doesn't really look like the character. The biggest cause of this is that the proportions aren't right. This is a very common problem, especially among beginners. So don't worry, you're not alone. I definitely struggled with this too back then, like with this piece I drew from way back in 2020, which was also meant to be Okayu, but the body proportions are way off, so it doesn't resemble her. The solution is simply to measure the proportions of the character you're trying to draw, especially if it's your first time drawing it. And even if you're a more experienced artist, this is still a useful tip since we sometimes build up a habit of drawing a certain body type when we draw, and that can get in the way when we need to draw a different type than we're used to. So for example, the other day, I wanted to draw some Fuomoko fan art, so I took the time to measure the proportions first since it's my first time drawing them, and also because I have the tendency to draw younger looking characters, since up until then, I drew a lot of lapis fan art. There's two things we need to measure, proportions of the body and of the face. I'm going to use the sketch based on the original for the sake of this demonstration. With the body, we generally want to measure how many heads tall the character is, so I like to measure from the top of the head to the chin and based off that, figure out how many heads tall the character should be. I also like to note down where the landmarks of the body are. And in this case, measuring from the top of the head, one head down is of course the bottom of the chin, two heads down is the bottom of the ribcage, three head is just a bit below the pelvis, four heads is a bit above the knees, five heads middle of the lower leg, and six and a half heads the feet. By measuring like this, we can get a clear sense of how tall the figure should be overall and how long each body part is relative to the rest of the body. We can also use the landmarks to check if we're following it close enough. It goes without saying, the closer to the original's proportions you get, the more it will resemble it. With the face, we want to measure where the eyes, nose, mouth, and hair are. And just like with the body, you want to keep this in mind and check that you're following the character's actual proportions when drawing. And so in this case, I broke it down into 1 8 measurements. And from the top is the top of the hair, below the roll, top of the forehead, eyebrows, the base of the top of the eyelid, the tip of the nose, and just a bit below the mouth. And just like with the body, you want to keep this in mind and check that you're following the character's actual proportions when drawing. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, I hope you can let me know by dropping a quick like below. These days I get people telling me they love the expressions I draw, but it actually used to be one of my biggest weaknesses and the thing Kakage Sensei critiqued me on the most, because I'd always draw these neutral looking faces. In reflecting back, I think I kept making that mistake because I didn't really care about the expression that much, and because of that, I didn't bother to learn more about them. But what I hadn't realized at the time was just how important the facial expressions are in telling the personality of the character and the story of whatever piece you're drawing. Thankfully, because I pretty much got a good beating each time, I started working overtime to improve on them. I practiced a lot and made it a habit to be very intentional about the character's personality I wanted to show. And thankfully, over time, all the effort started to pay off. Oh! Just I think the biggest lesson I learned from this was how our weaknesses can actually turn into our strengths later on if we continue to work on them. Because oftentimes, difficulty and frustration is just a sign that we simply need to do more practice and reps on the thing. When it comes to actually improving at facial expressions, I found that there's two things we need to learn. The first is the technical aspect of how to draw it. These are things such as understanding the structure of the face, such as how the lower eyelids go up when someone is joyful, due to how the cheeks rise up from the big smile. There's a lot of ways to learn this, such as studying from books and photos, and I also recommend studying how the artists you admire draw their facial expressions. The second is the storytelling consideration and being intentional with what you want to convey. For example, if we compare these two pieces, 
On the left, there's not really much intention other than a girl standing. And it doesn't convey anything about her personality or what the viewer is meant to feel. Compared to on the right, where there's a clear intention about the character's messy personality and the situation she's in. For this second part, I think it's more about research and thinking about what elements will help convey the story or feeling you want to express. For example, this is fan art of Hololive's Lapless, and the story situation I wanted to tell was how her room is an absolute mess and she needs help cleaning it. I also wanted to show her untidy and mischievous personality. And for the background, I of course wanted to include the things she personally likes herself, such as cola and games. Then based off those points, I experiment different poses and expressions until I find one that I like. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank SP Pen for kindly sponsoring this video. They just came out with their new Artist 22 Plus Pen Display, which is the world's first 22-inch tablet to have 16K pressure levels. I previously had the chance to try out their Deco Pro 2, which also has 16K pressure levels, and it didn't disappoint. So I was genuinely curious to see how well the technology holds up on a big display tablet like this. Let's check it out. As you'd expect, the pen is extremely sensitive. The 16K levels really does give a huge pressure range to work with versus something like an 8K pressure pen. And I did find there was a noticeable difference in just how gradual the ramp up in pressure is when you're making strokes. I usually like to use default settings, but since I'm used to a lower sensitivity pen and I also press very lightly, I found it was more comfortable to lower the hardness so I don't have to press so hard to access the full pressure range. I tested this tablet over a couple of days and I used it for practice sketches like this and also for coloring an illustration that I did for work. Overall, I thought the drawing experience was good. Although I'm still not used to just how thin the strokes can go with this pen, it felt nice to sketch on and I had no issues using it to paint colors either. As for the screen, the viewing angles are wide, it has a matte film to reduce glare and I didn't notice any parallax while drawing. It's also nice that they included color spaces to choose from depending on your needs. Overall, I felt it was a pretty solid screen, especially when you take into account its $470 price tag, which is on the more affordable side for a tablet this big. And right now you can also get a discount on it as XP Pen is currently having their Black Friday sale. So if that interests you, you can check it out in the links below. So I used to be a bit of what they call a gyakubari otaku in Japanese, which is the term for someone who likes stuff that goes against what's popular and trending. For example, I used to avoid some popular anime or games that were too mainstream. And because of that, I still haven't watched some anime like Demon Slayer. Ridiculous, I know, because later on I did watch just the movie since some friends invited me to come along. And I was like, oh wow, this is amazing. But this kind of thinking crept into my art as well. And for a long time, I used to sometimes avoid studying what was popular, which I feel slowed down my growth as an artist. Because what took me a long time to realize was that it's by studying popular works that you actually get to learn the elements and skills that go into creating popular works. This became super clear to me when at some point, Kakage Sensei was talking about the ideal route for people aiming to become a pro. And how as part of it, you should just keep drawing popular characters and genres until you reach 100k followers. Because drawing them will give you the experience points you need to be able to draw popular stuff yourself. On that point, another piece of advice Kakage Sensei often gives is that you must be interested in what's popular. I know how hard it can be if you're not into some of the popular stuff out there, but as someone who's had the same problem and overcame it, there's two tips I can share which you might find helpful. The first is that, as weird as it sounds, you can actually learn to like something. For example, in psychology, there's this thing called the mere exposure effect, where people tend to like things the more they are exposed to them because it feels more familiar. This is one reason why companies advertise a lot, because even if you don't buy anything, each time we see their brand, they become more familiar to us. It's kind of like how in some games you can raise a character's affection points for you by simply interacting with them more. We can actually use this to our own advantage so that if we want to like something more, we can try to spend more time interacting with it. The second is that even if we aren't into something, we can still learn to appreciate what people like about it. So these days, whenever I see some anime or illustration go viral, but I don't really understand why, instead of pushing it away, I instead become curious and try to figure out what makes it work so well and see if I can learn something new from it. Note that this doesn't mean you must only draw and study what's popular, but simply that there's a lot of things we can learn from studying what works well, which we can then apply to make our own art better, no matter what we draw. There was this time Kakage Sensei was giving me feedback on a piece and told me I needed to change a certain part. But it didn't look wrong to me, so I told him that my intuition says it looks fine as it is. To which he replied, your intuition that it looks right is wrong. And the moment I heard that, I immediately realized how my current intuition couldn't be trusted. After all, intuition is acquired through practice and building up skills and experience over time. 
But our current skills are only good enough to get us to where we are right now. And in order to get to the next level, we need to upgrade them. If my intuition at the time was already really good, then the proof would have been in the pudding and the piece I drew would have already gone viral and gotten tens of thousands of likes and all that, which of course wasn't the case. So hearing that advice was really game changing for me because I used to have a hard time taking in new information when it would break things that are thought to be true about art, even when it came from a trusted source like Kakage Sensei. But whenever I made those changes, it usually turned out for the better so over time, I've learned to be wary of my current intuition and always be open to learning new things. Of course, if we distrust our intuition all the time, we wouldn't be able to create at all. So personally, I found that the right balance to strike is to switch between the confident creator and the humble learner mindset, depending on the situation. When I'm creating, I'm going to trust the skill, learning and experience I've built up and draw with confidence. But when I'm trying to learn something or when I'm editing and refining a piece, I'm going to open my mind up and assume that I might be wrong and try to find ways to improve. One thing we need to be careful of though is who we take advice from because it's clearly not a good idea to take advice from people who haven't shown clear evidence that they know what they're talking about. The obvious one to be wary of is of course random people on the internet but it can also come from friends and family who are just trying to help and have good intentions but don't really have the expertise to give useful advice on the subject. What do you even want to express with this piece? Some time ago, Kakage Sensei asked me this during one of our feedback sessions and the question hit me like a bus determined to send me to an isekai. I couldn't find an answer. For a long time, I had been so focused on just trying to get good at the technical skills that I lost sight of what I was trying to express with my art. Why was I even drawing in the first place? 10,000 hours into the journey and I had forgotten why I started. The piece I was getting feedback on was one I had done for work. I drew exactly what the client wanted according to specifications and references they gave me, but that was the problem. It wasn't enough. He told me something along the lines of, you shouldn't just draw as you're told. You need to add your own flavor to it because if you only draw exactly as the instructions and references they give, then there's no reason it has to be you. Anyone can draw following a reference, so why should people ask you specifically to do the work? So it's really important to know your taste and what you like because that will let you add that taste of yours into your creations. It lets you say, because I like these things, whenever I draw this subject matter, I like to draw it in this way and add these things to it. Of course, what Kakage Sensei is trying to say here isn't that we should just ignore the client's instructions. Not at all. We should definitely listen to it and deliver according to the specifications given. But at the same time, we should also be adding in our taste and individuality because it's one of the reasons people will choose us to do the work in the first place. So I found that a big part of the art journey actually consists of learning about ourselves. It took me a long time to come up with the answer to what do I like and what do I want to express? But by continuing to draw, I was eventually able to find it. And at the same time, I'm still discovering the answer because it's an ongoing journey of self-discovery since as humans, we continue to change as we learn and experience new things in our lives. If you're struggling to find what you want to express, what I found is that you can't think your way to an answer. You can only find it through continuing to draw and creating more art. Discovery is in the doing. Anyway, big thanks to Kakage Sensei for sharing his wisdom with me these past few years and also for helping out with this video. Kakage Sensei, honto ni arigato gozaimasu. There'll be a link to his YouTube and X in the description if you want to check it out. Also, you might be interested in this video I made on the 1 2 3 shadow system Japanese artists use for shading. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out when I make a new one. This was Ori, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye!